Hello and welcome to LMU Community TV News. We hope you're having a great week. I'm Ashley Collingsworth. Thank you for joining us. On Friday, more than 60 students and their families made the trip to the campus of Lincoln Memorial University for New Student Registration Day. Families were treated to breakfast before they were welcomed by Vice President Clayton, Dr. Clayton Hess and Vice President Dr. Jonathan Leo at the Math and Science Building. Later in the morning, before the family member session, LMU Community TV News was able to grab parents to discuss this transition in their lives. First up, we talked with a mother-daughter team, daughter team who is preparing to say goodbye this fall. Tell me about your experience so far this morning here at LMU. Um, it's been great. We felt very welcome. They had a great presentation in there and they made the kids feel like that they can come to them for anything and um, they really stressed tutoring for the kids and making sure that they keep their grades up. Okay. So where exactly are you all from and what prompted you all to choose LMU? Um, we're from Roswell, Georgia and my daughter um, Rachel plays soccer and um, Coach Deanna um, is a a great coach and um, saw her play and reached out to her and she's very excited about being part of the team. Okay. So what is she um, what is she going into at LMU? Uh, Pre-med biology. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does she want to continue at LMU and go into DCOM? Um, that might be something that she does. We don't know. It just depends on how she uh, finishes out her four years. So okay. yes. So this is a question for both mom and sis. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel about being here today knowing that your daughter is going getting ready to go to college oh i'm sad but happy i'm sad for you know that i'm happy for her for the next stage of life but i'm sad because i'm losing my baby girl so mm -hmm. how do you feel i'm excited for her i think that this is a good experience for her and this is something she really really is like excited about so i'm happy that she's getting to do it and she's getting to play soccer where she wants to mm -hmm. so i'm excited but you're also sad oh yeah i'm sad because she's leaving yeah <laughs> Next up is a mother from Ohio who tells us her and her daughter chose LMU due to the size of the campus and the beautiful location. Tell me about your experience so far this morning here at LMU. It's been very informative. Um, they've been very down to earth and welcoming and we've learned a lot in the short amount of time. Okay, so tell us about where you're from and what prompted you all to choose LMU. Uh, we're from Lima, Ohio. Uh, my daughter wanted to come south. She wanted a small school, so she actually did a lot of work on the internet, and we made about six different college visits down this way, mm -hmm. and she loved LMU. So when did you all choose LMU? Uh, last summer. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, what is she going to go into? What is her field um, of study going to be? Math education. So now being a mama, <laughs> how do you feel being here today, knowing that your daughter is going to be five hours away at college? I'm happy for her. She's so excited. Uh, when we came down in, in September for the um, overnight orientation, she just loved it and felt like she was at home. And so I'm going to miss her, but I'm happy for her. The day continued with a showcase on the third floor of Math and Science that included presentations from departments within the university. Check-in stations were also provided with families for families during the event, along with complete tours of the university. We would also like to welcome all of these students and their families and look forward to seeing them all this fall. Coming up this weekend at the Nantahala Outdoor Center just inside North Carolina, they are inviting the public to come out to enjoy Olympic Day that is going to celebrate the upcoming Summer Olympics. LMU Community TV News had the privilege to meet a former Olympic gold medalist. Please allow us to introduce you to Joe Jacoby. So this is the Olympic gold medal that my canoe partner Scott Strasbaugh and I won at the 1992 Olympic Games in Spain. And it's the first gold medal that the Americans ever won in the sport of whitewater canoe slalom. And it has been the only one to this point. We are hopeful that Michal could change that this summer. Listen, when you prepare for the Olympic Games, what you're really preparing for is to do the very best you can. This is something that is like bonus. It's extra. You can never prepare for just it. You prepare to do the best you can. What I think is great about having this gold medal today is just that opportunity to share it with people. We bring it to presentations, we bring it to our uh, media tours and outlets, and the more people that get a chance to hold it and see it and say, hey, that comes from the sport of canoe kayak. That medal came out of something that started at the Nantahala Outdoor Center. It's very cool. The national anthem itself and that medal ceremony 
I gotta tell you, it, yes, it's emotional. I've lived it two, two different ways. One is an athlete. The moment goes by very quickly. The second time was as a commentator for NBC at the Olympic Games where you're trying to get people so excited about it where it is the spectators that are getting very excited about this. Yeah. Will he or won't he? Yeah. And for the athlete, they're never thinking, will I or won't I? It's just moving forward and trying to do better every time you get on the water. Just try to get better in small increments. And at the end of the day, you control what you can control. You can't control your competition. You can't control what the other guy's gonna do. So this really uh, truly equates with that ability to let go and come back to what's important. Whether you do that a week before the Olympic Games or you do it seconds before you leave the start gate, that ability to leave it all behind, to let go, to reconnect with what's truly important, your relationship with the water, your relationship with the river, that's how these things come along. Jacoby tells us more about the sport that won him and his teammate the 1992 gold medal. You maneuver your canoe or kayak around poles that are hung from wires above the gate. And the idea is to go as quickly as you can through the poles without touching the poles with your boat, your body, or paddle. If you touch the poles, then you get penalty seconds added to your time. Two seconds if you touch the gate, 50 seconds if you miss it altogether. It is one of the most exciting sports on the Olympic program. People just love to watch it. It almost seems like one of these winter Olympic gravity sports yeah. on the summer Olympic program. Yeah. It's very exciting. And finally, he tells us about what it was that drew him to this very popular water sport. I grew up on the Potomac River in Washington, D.C., and I started at a summer camp just outside of the D.C. area where canoeing was an activity. Started on calm water and then slowly began to progress and qualify in my camp to go out on river trips on Potomac mm -hmm. River and started with smaller white water and then increasingly bigger white water with a little bit more volume and a little bit more intensity. And it just became something I enjoyed doing with my friends. Mm -hmm. It was never that idea like, oh, I'm going to go win a gold medal right. in the sport. It is just something, and to this day, it's more, in peop more important who I paddle with than what I accomplish on the right. water. Over the next few weeks, we will bring you more updates from Jacoby on the upcoming Summer Olympics. Saturday afternoon, a portion of State Route 32, also known as U.S. Highway 25E, was designated in honor of local businesswoman and philanthropist Eleanor Yoakum during a ceremony. The designation took place in an afternoon ceremony that was inside the Abraham Lincoln Library and Museum. Designating the portion of State Route 32 to Yoakum was State Representative Jerry Sexton. I said earlier that Eleanor started working on getting this road four lane about 40 years, years ago. And when I was uh, trying to think about, you know, what could I do to bring recognition or some way honor her for what she's done, I was driving down Highway 25 and was driving on this beautiful road, you know, and I thought, I just bet you know, Lori Oakham had something to do with this. Jesse Seal was with me and we discussed it and I looked into it and I found out that she did. Now, in her on the way, if you ask her about it, she'll just say, I'm just glad to be a small part of that road. But I want you to know she's a major part of it. And I've done enough research to know that she had a great big hand in it. And Commissioner, as he said, uh, he could uh, tell a lot of stories that now, I think, I believe you really did run when you saw her coming. <laughs> she was a woman on a mission, and so that's why we're here today. And I'd like to ask her son and her daughter, Rob and Stephanie, if they would come up for the presentation of the son.
portion will be designated the Eleanor Yoakum Highway. Other dignitaries on hand to celebrate the event were Congressman Jimmy Duncan, Chairman of the LMU Board of Trustees, O.V. Pete DeBusk, Lieutenant Governor Ron Ramsey, and among others, former Governor Don Sunquist. The signs designating the portion of the highway can be seen along the route. A vote of no was given by the Claiborne County Board of Education in response to the push for charter school status for J. Frank White Academy. The school board has the legal standing under state law to make a vote if certain criteria is not met by the applicant. In the first reading, the board found areas of concern with the application that was submitted by Lincoln Memorial University. The application committee made up of members of the school board put together a written response to the charter application. The application committee used the Tennessee Department of Education Charter School Scoring Rubric to critique the application. Areas of strength, omissions, and concerns were noted within each subsection. A source from Lincoln Memorial University released this statement. Lincoln Memorial University is honored to have a positive working relationship with Claiborne County Schools. LMU will review the comments and clarify all necessary areas of concern within the 30-day window, said the source. Director of Schools Connie Holdway said during the work session that LMU will have the 30 days to address the concerns and amend the application. If and when this occurs, the school system will then have 30 days to approve any amendments submitted by the university. The process could take some time to conclude due to the allocation of extra time for additional reviews and appeals. Final approval will be determined by the Tennessee Board of Education. Well, don't go anywhere because we've got an update on the newest 5K that is coming up this weekend on the campus of Lincoln Memorial University. College. It can seem a million miles away. But what if you could get help with your tuition expenses? Get help filling out all those applications and finding a major that fits. All of a sudden, the impossible becomes possible. Visit collegefortn.org today. College. You can get there from here. I already knew that I was going to go to college, you know, from a young age. I definitely want to major in political science. After that, I'm going to get my law degree. Then I'm going to come back to Detroit, boost the economy, become the mayor or something, try to make the situation better for other people. I feel like I owe it to the city. I'm determined. It's... It's going to happen. My name is Justin, and I am your dividend. The feature film Above Suspicion began filming in Harlan last Wednesday and will continue to be filmed in the area until early July. The feature film is in need of people ages 18 years or older, all ethnicities, especially those with law enforcement training or background, and they are also looking for cars made between 1970 to 1985. Last Thursday, we sent Joseph Lewis and Adam Crawford to Harlan to check out the sites surrounding the filming of Above Suspicion. As you can see, not much is happening, but as the summer continues, Harlan and surrounding communities can expect to see much more activity. Emilia Clark of the Game of Thrones and Terminator Genesis, along with Jack Houston of The Longest Ride and Boardwalk Empire, have signed on to play the leading roles. If you are interested in becoming a paid extra for Above Suspicion, you can go to their Facebook page and search TW Casting, where all of the extras needed for the film will be posted. If you wish to send a general submission, you can email a recent photo of yourself along with your age, height, weight, wardrobe sizes, a description of any tattoos, and your location to above suspicion extras at gmail.com. It's a family event where you can learn all about the genealogical history and heritage around the area and also see the lifestyles of our pioneer ancestors and demonstrations by craftsmen and women and military reenactors. The Genealogy Jamboree is not limited to just the families that come through Cumberland Gap, but it includes all families from across the United States. The sixth annual Genealogy Jamboree and Pioneer Day took place over the weekend and promised to exceed all expectations on the streets of the historic town of Cumberland Gap. The popular, the festival has been given the extra stamp of approval once again by the Southeast Tourism Society that has garnered a spot as one of the top 20 events across the Southeast for the month of June. We are one of two genealogy book companies that travels throughout the United States. 
This year I've been to Salt Lake City, Utah for a big conference already. We've been to Oklahoma one time. We've been to three places in Texas and we will be going to New Mexico later in the year. So basically we stay in the Southwest, but we had been told about this, never done an outdoor event before, and we decided what the heck. Never been to Cumberland Gap, Tennessee, which is gorgeous. We didn't have anything going, and so we loaded up our trailer, which we carry about 3,000 titles with us. And that's what people will see here. Everything from how to start doing genealogy to a lot of the material you'll need to do the genealogy once you get started. Genealogy is called a blue hair disease. That's because you normally don't start until you're at least in your 50s. There's a few exceptions. It's somewhat expensive because traveling is expensive. You get started more or less out of curiosity. That's how I got started. That's how a lot of the people that I talk to get started. Where did, where did my people come from? And when you get right down to it, we stopped in Rome, Georgia on the way up here and my wife finds out she's kin to half the county. The big button now is DNA and we've done the DNA and we've done the autosomal and we know where our ancestors came from because it's going to tell you if you've got Native American blood. In my case, I'm 100% European, but it's a very interesting hobby. The Jamboree was brought to life one day by a couple of local guys just standing and pondering on a porch. The Cumberland Gap, Tennessee Geneolo Genealogy and History Group is open to anyone wanting to join and promote the recordings of pioneers and their descendants with the goal of preserving and recording Cumberland Gap's history. To join, you can visit their website, www.genealogyjamboree.us. It is the hope of the Arts in the Gap to become an annual destination for passionate and aspiring artists from the region and beyond where you can explore your creativity in the beautiful and inspiring environment of Cumberland Gap. Saturday, June 18th is the Cumberland Mountain Music Show that is held in the LMU Convention Center at the heart of Cumberland Gap. The doors open at 6.30 and the show gets underway at 7.30. You're invited to head down to the Gap and enjoy a great night of music and fun. The Appalachian Young Writers Workshop is scheduled for June 19th through the 25th and it's a week-long residential program for high school age students from the Appalachian area and beyond. Clay Hand Building for 5th through for first through fifth grade students is on July 11th through the 14th. If you have any questions, you can contact Darnell Arnault at darnell.arnault at lmunet.edu or call 423-869-7085 or visit the LMU homepage and click on Arts in the Gap. The Physician Assistant Class of 2017 at LMU DCOM will present its first Sundown Rundown 5K race this Friday, June 17th. Registration for the race will begin at 7 o'clock and the race will begin at 7.30 in the parking lot of DCOM. The Sundown Rundown, formerly known as the PA Life the Night 5K, benefits Servolution Health Services in Speedwell. Servolution Health Services is a 501c3 nonprofit corporation that began as a response to the tremendous need for primary dental and mental health care for the underserved within the region. Medical professionals volunteer at the clinic to provide services to the community. Runners will take on a 3.1 mile course and walkers will complete a one mile course. Registration for adults is $35 for runners and $20 for walkers. The registration fee includes entry into the race with chip timing, a sundown rundown 5K t-shirt and two glow in the dark bracelets and necklaces. To register or for more information, you can visit sundownrundown5k.com or if you would like to make a donation, you can visit sundownrundown5k/donate.com. Well, keep it right here on LMU Community TV News as Adam Haley brings you the very latest in the world of sports from around the campus and the region right after this. This is why you get by on four hours sleep. Why you took a second job. This is why you taught yourself how to fix the plumbing. And spend hours juggling the bills. This is why you'll do whatever it takes to keep your home. And that 
is why we want to help. We are making home affordable, a free government resource that can make paying the mortgage easier. Now more options are available. Call 888-995-HOPE to talk one-on-one with a housing expert today. Welcome back. The LMU Athletic Department and more specifically the LMU coaching staffs have stayed busy this summer with summer camps and this past week was no exception as LMU baseball completed their summer camp schedule with the youth baseball camp and LMU tennis completed their summer tennis camp. All that went on outside while the LMU basketball teams each had a camp inside the Tex Turner Arena. Josh Church's staff will stay busy this weekend as they'll host the first of two elite camps on Sunday. The elite camp is designed for high school boys basketball players and will work on individual skill workouts as well as five on five games. The men's basketball staff will then turn around on Monday and start their fundamental skills camp for grades K through 12. The cost of this camp is $100 and campers will work on dribbling, passing, shooting and defensive drills. They'll also compete in five on five games, three on three games and other individual competitions. Also coming up later this week will be women's basketball elite camp two. And for more information on this camp, as well as other camps to come up later this month and next month, you can log on to LMURailsplitters.com, go to the Fan Central tab, and click Camps. Earlier this week, the LMU men's and women's soccer, as well as the women's volleyball teams, announced their upcoming schedules for the fall. The women's soccer team has 15 scheduled matches for the fall, 7 road games, 6 home games, and 2 neutral site games. The season will start in Columbus, Georgia on September 2nd against Bellarmine, who finished last season ranked 14th, and against West Alabama on September the 4th. Ten of the Lady Rail Splitters opponents finished last season with a winning record, while Ford made the NCAA tournament. Their first home game will be September 11th against Lee, and the women will have to go on the road to face reigning conference champion Carson Newman on October 25th. The men's soccer team has 16 scheduled matches with seven at home, seven on the road, and two neutral site matches. The men's season will begin September 1st in Columbus, Georgia against Montevallo and then against UNC Pembroke on September the 3rd. The Well Splitters will open home play on September 7th against Southern Wesleyan. The men will have to face last season's co-regular season champs, Wingate and Carson Newman, both on the road this season. And the LMU volleyball team will have 30 regular season matches with only 11 of those being played in the Mary Mars Gym. Nine of LMU's 19 different opponents finished with a winning record while six made the NCAA tournament. This season will start on September 2nd in Bristol, Tennessee at the King Invitational where the ladies will face Shorter, UVA Wise, Erskine and King in two days. They'll have their first home match on September 8th against Tusculum. They'll also be a part of the SAC versus Peach Belt Conference Challenge in October in Jefferson City, where they'll face Augusta, Lander, Georgia College, and USC Aiken. LMU will host rival Carson Newman October 18th, and then the 10-time defending regular season SAC champion Wingate Bulldogs on October 28th. For complete schedules for all three teams, you can go to LMURailsplitters.com. The Tennessee Smokies will finish off their first half of the season this weekend on the road in Jackson, Mississippi against the Generals. Game one of the series was rained out Wednesday night and will be made up as a doubleheader on Friday. The first half of the season will come to an end on Sunday and the North versus South All-Star Game will be on Tuesday in Pearl, Mississippi, where eight Smokies will represent the North Division. To get tickets, find out promotions, or to keep up with the Smokies, you can go online to SmokiesBaseball.com. Now that's all for sports, but stay tuned. Joseph Lewis and Tyler Riley are right here with your entertainment report. I'm Joseph Lewis bringing you all the latest information in the world of movies. Coming to theaters this weekend is Finding Dory, Pixar's long-awaited sequel to their beloved modern classic Finding Nemo. Months after the events of the first film, Ellen DeGeneres' memory-impaired Dory suddenly finds herself recalling events from her childhood, kicking off a brand new story of friendship and self-discovery with Nemo and Marlin along for the adventure. Albert Brooks, Ed O'Neill, and Diane Keaton are only a few of the major talents featured amongst the extensive voice cast, while original director Andrew Stanton once again takes the lead behind the camera. Also new to theaters this week is Central Intelligence, a buddy comedy in which Dwayne The Rock Johnson stars as a geek turned CIA agent who calls upon his former jock nemesis, played by Kevin Hart, to lend a hand throughout a confidential, high-stakes, globe-spanning mission. Central Intelligence is helmed by director Rawson Marshall Thurber, previously responsible for Dodgeball and We're the Millers, and the supporting cast includes Gone Baby Gone's Amy Ryan and Breaking Bad's Aaron Paul. Lastly for this week, in limited release, is Clown, 
a supernatural horror film from John Watts, the filmmaker behind 2015's Kevin Bacon starring thriller Cop Car, as well as Marvel's upcoming Spider-Man reboot. Andy Powers of the HBO series Oz stars as a father who, in the midst of preparing for his son's birthday party, dons an old clown costume that progressively fuses to his body and takes over his mind. Terrier's Laura Allen and Fargo's Peter Stormare co-star. Finding Dory and Central Intelligence can be seen in theaters nationwide starting this Friday, June 17th, while Clown will be available in select cities. And as always, be sure to check your local listings for special Thursday night screenings in the area. That's all for today in the world of movies. I'm Joseph Lewis. I'm Tyler Allen of 91.3 WLMU and LMU Community TV. And here's your concert calendar for the week of June 16th, 2016. Coming Friday, June 17th to the Bijou Theater in Knoxville is a very special performance by singer-songwriter Jason Mraz. Mraz has been quiet for some time now, playing his first show in multiple years last week at Bonnaroo. This show was announced only a couple of weeks ago as a surprise to many. It's going to be just an evening of Jason Mraz and his guitar with no backing band. This will be an incredible opportunity to see one of the most successful singer-songwriters of the past two decades in a very intimate setting. Coming Sunday, June 19th to the Bijou Theater in Knoxville is Jordan Smith. Local talent and winner of The Voice, Jordan Smith, seems to have been everywhere lately, from the local Mountain Laurel Festival to the Kentucky Derby, and now the Harlem native is bringing his incredible voice and talent to East Tennessee this Sunday. Coming Tuesday, June 21st to the Riverbend Music Center in Cincinnati is Jimmy Buffett. Buffett's following of Parrot Heads in Cincinnati is one of the most dedicated fan bases in the world. Buffett holds the venue's record for most sold-out shows, selling out 41 times since his first appearance there in 1988. If you've ever wanted to see Jimmy Buffett live, this is the venue to do it in. I'm Tyler Allen of 91.3 WLMU and LMU Community TV, and that's your concert calendar for this week. It's not always easy being a dad. Do you have panda asthma too? Does that run in the family? This is the home of the most priceless kung fu artifacts. But when you make an effort... Dad, we're not supposed to touch anything. Oh, sorry. Go along, son. It's always worth it. Whoa, master! The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's <laughs> life. Take time to be a dad today. I am gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. calls me googly eyes. You know you're beautiful, right? You know that? You can you are beautiful. I got bullied for wearing glasses. Share if you're against bullying. We put it out there, just took off. Three million people have shared this post. Don't let bullies get you down. I stand with you. Our whole family's wearing glasses. I wear glasses and I'm proud. I even have the army on my team. All the kind comments brought my child joy. I don't feel thank you is enough. Thanks. One thing you can never have sex without. It's not something you buy. Or something you take. In fact, there's only one way to get it. It has to be given to you, freely. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. Consent. If you don't get it, you don't get it. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. And that is going to do it for your LMU Community TV News Weekend Edition. I'm Adam Haley. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you on Monday. For everyone here at LMU Community TV, I'm Ashley Collingsworth. Have a great weekend.